remember that you're my first? Do you remember this? I do remember this, and thank you for having me back. Yeah, anytime. My first interview ever was this gentleman. Yeah. Hey, I have a, a trivia question for yeah. you. I'm so bad at these things. What I'm addicted to that quiz game, yeah. and I'm terrible at it. Qu what is it? Qu crack? No, it's trivia crack? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, what's the name of the quiz game? Trivia crack. <laughs> you're gonna know the answer to this. What do you get? When? When you mix. Not colors, I don't know the color wheel. Breaking Bad. And? Toast. You get our show, Battle Creek. There you go. So we had a lot of Breaking Bad fans that watched the first episode, same thing with House. Creators of the show. Creators of this, right, House. I should back up. Yes, let's back yeah. up. Yeah, okay, so. Hey, you're a host now. No. You wanna you, pitch it? You were doing a much better job as evidenced by the fact that I just rolled in to about Wait, something you segued. That... Go ahead. So there's this show. Yeah. It's a cop show that was created by Vince Gilligan, who created Breaking Bad, and David Shore, who, who created House. Now you're just dropping names. Those if are I, great if names you drop, to drop. But then you have to pick it up. There I think, you go. Who was it? When we were on House, I think it was Olivia Wilde who made this game where if you're in a conversation and you name drop, she will stop you in the conversation. Go, I'm sorry, hold on, hold on. Oh, she, she'll do that. See, I always knew I loved that girl. Here you go. So um, I saw the pilot of this show. There's a lot of claiming your territory and like, this is our territory, this is a small town. And then Josh comes in and yeah. he's kind of like, no, no, no. Yes, he has a very cool character. So he plays an FBI agent who gets transferred into this little town of Battle Creek, Michigan. Yeah. The rest of us are cops and detectives in Michigan, in, in Battle Creek. And our version of that police department is totally underfunded. We don't even have, you know, the, the right equipment to to taser suspects. Josh's character comes in with all of this money and this big fancy office, and there's a lot of tension between, you know, whether he's actually helping us solve crimes or whether he's getting in the way of us knowing, you know, knowing how to Josh do police work. Josh could never work. get in the way. He, he ends up not getting in the way. No. I, I read that you did the ride along with the cops and yeah. real life cops, and you actually found the mundane part of their jobs really fascinating. Super fascinating. The mundane parts of anybody's job is, you know, you're sitting around doing paperwork or in our industry or prepping for something. There's a lot of time you're waiting around. With uh, law enforcement or government work in general, there, you know, there's a lot of paperwork and things that are really boring. These guys are sitting around for four hours and they're making fun of each other and they're making dick jokes and they're making, you know, totally inappropriate, you know, in between just to keep it lighthearted. And I love that because you never see that side of things on the TV show Cops or obviously it shouldn't come up in any of the more serious conversations about law enforcement, right? In, in our show, Battle Creek, there's, there's automatically a lot of humor. So yeah. having a chance to shadow real cops and seeing that they bring a lot of levity and humor to, to their jobs was cool. And right. it's not totally and unrealistic, right? you're not gonna right? anybody exactly. either. Yeah. And what is this about about the cereal festival? Yeah, so the real the real city of Battle Creek, which is a, a very cool small city in the middle of Michigan, every year, once a year, they have an annual uh, breakfast table, a cereal festival. In our version of Battle Creek, there was an episode where there was a shooting at the cereal festival. Why are people pissed about cereal? I think in fairness, it was just once and it was a, <laughs> it, it was two rival gangs. The Frosted Flakes versus <laughs> right, the, whatever. And the Kashi, the Kashi gang is rough, man. I want to talk about the big picture. You're yeah. hosting, oh, it's fascinating. Cool. Don't yeah. get me started. Here's the big picture. There's more to crime than just the numbers. There's always a story behind the stats. And you'd be surprised what plotting out the world's criminal activity can tell us about where crime's been, how it works, and where it's likely to pop up next. Now, let's take an entirely new look at how and where the business of crime really operates. So basic, let's let's back up again. Yeah, we're both and not tell, doing our right, yeah. Duty. Let's tell you guys about the show on <laughs> National Geographic. Again, I'll at just the let you, of, you know. Please, go ahead. We should have sat down and gone over what <laughs> what I was I gonna say versus, all right. So there is all of this information, right? And what I like in our show too is, you know when you go on BuzzFeed and there are all these crazy maps um, that are, you know, the country is shaded in different colors based on who listens to what kind of music or what kind of food people are eating in which places. So we essentially made a show based on that type of a concept, which is how do you put these weird data points that otherwise look boring into a way that seems really interesting. National Geographic with these really serious research teams and they came up with all of this random data that they would find on things like food and sex and crime and drugs and found a really interesting way to present it. So in every show we have three segments where we go out into these random places around the world and interview people that are living these crazy, uh, awesome situations. So and you we went to Florida where they have the, apparently the most sex? Yes, oh, you know about this. The old okay. people. It's the old people, it is. I love that According you know this. To your show. No, yeah. go ahead, go No, ahead. you go. No, we you do, you're never, doing it much would, more interesting yeah. Than I am. Well, apparently the most sex to be had in the United States is in this retirement town in Florida, and yeah. it's people over the age of 60 or something. Call are your grandmother up and ask 
Lisa what she's doing. If she don't answer and say she don't have an answering machine, Grandma's busy, yo. Yeah. So <laughs> it's true. There's this data point that the researchers found. If I remember correctly, it was an uptick in STDs that they found in this particular zip code in Florida. Then they looked into it and they realized this is actually the community that's having the most sex in America. Then they looked into it even more and said, oh, sh this is actually a senior citizens community. <laughs> oh my God. And because they went to school before sex ed, right, they're older, so they, their they awareness of STDs is so low, they're not worried about getting pregnant. So they're just banging away, <laughs> not knowing that they could catch something. Have you never been to a pharmacy, Grandma? And Condoms. Uh, <laughs> the way that we approached the story was really from, in, in true Nacho fashion, from a, a, a curiosity angle of, this is cool, let's look into this, instead of a judgmental, ha ha, look at that. Right. Why are you having sex? You should know better. None of that, like, we think it's awesome. And what's the grasshopper thing? So the grasshopper thing, uh, we were looking at uh, sources of protein, right? There's all this conversation about everything from quinoa to fishing <laughs> to Look at you bringing whatever, it back right? around like a Bring, good host. It's, but it's true, we're, <laughs> how do you find, and, and we, we looked at, well, what's the, the most economically viable source of protein in the animal kingdom? And it's grasshoppers. And so we sent a crew down there into really rural Mexico to work with a family that harvests grasshoppers and went out with them in the morning when Did they hunt it? them and cook them. I was shooting uh, back Battle Creek, so I couldn't go on that trip. Well, we knew that, Would and I today we it? brought you. No, you didn't! Oh no! Did Cue you really? the grass. I know. No. no. Because <laughs> because I had two schools of thought in that half a second when I realized you're going to make me eat a grasshopper. I was like, all right, well, if it's if it's cooked the way that they are on the it'll show, it'll be crunchy. It'll be crunchy, and there's a there's a corona in that other room. <laughs> so it's not the end of the day. There you go. Now, did you find out uh, if they um, if they eat more cereal in Battle Creek than in other parts of the country? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> They're season two. This is a good question. Keep these coming because I like these ideas. Listen, what else you got? Should you, should I just come along and join yes. National Geographic? Yes, please. Now? I, I don't mean, you think. Yes. So let's. Can we make this happen? Yeah. There you go. The Kalanicki Show.